Good morning all. I thought it was about time I got into super capacitors. So I've bought a couple of these. Uh, they were cheap. Um, I can't remember how much, about four or five dollars for the pair, I think. These are S cap 100 farad, 2.7 volts. So quite large in terms of uh, capacity. And I've attached one of them to this little uh, booster board. This booster board will boost anything from uh, 0.9 volts up to uh, a 5 volt output and there's an LED on there and it is just about on. I don't know whether it's visible. No, I don't think it's visible. So what I'm going to do is slightly charge this capacitor up and I'm going to do that by using a couple of inner loops. I've got to be careful not to short these out because the inner loops can kick out a fair amount of current. So let's put that on there and then I'll just touch this onto the inner loops, it's that way around, just very briefly. I thought I could see the LED there but I think it's the red crop clip reflecting in that bit of tinned copper track. So let's just give that a bit of a boost and I'll push the voltage on the cap up just enough to uh, keep that LED lit. Good. Now by my reckoning, um, the voltage on this capacitor is only going to be something tiny like 300, oh no, less than that probably, less than 100 millivolts probably. In fact, I'll get the DVM out in a minute and uh, measure it. But first, let's look at where these capacitors came from. So these are two pieces farad capacitor, 2.7 volts, 100 farads, 22 by 45 millimeters, super capacitor, uh, 2.7 volts, 100 farads, not microfarads, farads. Uh, $4.74, free shipping, and that's from Sea River 2009. So here it is with the uh, DVM on there, and yes, the voltage on that capacitor at the moment is really tiny. It's just 65 millivolts and falling. Of course, it's falling because the LED is ever so slightly lit. It's falling quite slowly, um, but it is draining the charge is draining out of the capacitor. So let's blip a bit of charge in from my inner loops. Now it is worth pointing out that the uh, series resistance or the equivalent series resistance, the internal resistance of this capacitor is extremely low. So when I connect the batteries, I'm effectively connecting them into a virtually dead short. And these wires, these little thin wires do get quite warm, sort of nice and toasty warm, really not burn meltdown hot, but certainly warm. So let's give it a bit of a blast. And that's pushed it up to 120 millivolts and the LED is correspondingly brighter. This LED only really gets to full brightness when I've got about half a volt on the capacitor, but I can go a lot further. This is a 2.7 volt capacitor. So let's put that on a bit longer. Let's charge it to something a good bit higher. Yes, now these wires are getting quite warm now. In fact, I'd almost go to, as far as saying they're quite hot. Not meltdown hot, but so what have we got there? 0 0.7 volts. I mean, that's easily enough to uh, keep that LED. There's probably the full five volts on this um, boost converter output now. With 0.7 volts going in, there's gonna be five volts coming out. I could measure that, but that's not really what I'm interested in at the moment. So let's take this a bit further. These wires cooled down a bit, but now they're warming up again. 0.8 volts. Let's take it to over a volt. Right, so there's now one volt on that capacitor. That's falling away. Because this LED is much brighter now, it's drawing more current. So it's pulling the voltage of the capacitor down more quickly. Let's see how far we can take this if I just leave this on. Of course, as the capacitor voltage rises up to meet the same voltage of, of, as the battery, the voltage across these wires, the potential difference between the inner loop batteries, are these hot? Yeah, they're quite warm. And the capacitor reduces so the current flowing through these wires reduces. They're okay, they're just a bit soft. They're not gonna burn out. 
so 1.4 volts. I'll leave that on just for a little while and see how high we can get the voltage on the capacitors. These are nominally 2.4 volts. There may be a little bit more in them because they're fairly freshly charged. So I'll just come back in a few moments. So we're up to nearly 2 volts now. How are my wires doing? They're cooler now because uh, 2 volts in the capacitor, about 2.4 in the batteries. Now there's enough uh, input voltage on the uh, converter here that I'm able to put this little voltmeter on the output of that converter so we can see that it is genuinely a good strong 5 volts coming out of there and 2 volts going in. Of course with this extra load there's a current flow out of this unit so there's a draw on that capacitor so it is going to take longer for these cells to push the capacitor voltage up to the same as the cells but I would expect I should be able to get the capacitor up to the full 2.4 volts. I might take this back off actually to give uh, the capacitor a fighting chance of getting up to the voltage of these nickel metal hydrides. Let's do that. Let's pull that out. That's just loose. And leave this for a bit longer. Of course, it all slows down now because the current flowing through here is that much lower. The resistance of these wires and connectors is relatively fixed. The potential difference between that potential, 2.1, and this potential, about 2.4, is reducing it's about 0.3 now so the charge the charging of the capacitor is that much slower so i'm up to 2.25 volts now but uh, i think i might cheat a bit now uh, let's take that off just in case there's a problem i might cheat and remove these two inner loops because i've got two inner loops actually sitting in my charger so they're going to be really well charged probably something in the order of uh, one and a half volts each. That's kind of where they top out. Let's get those out of there. Right, I'll put them in here. So these are the other two. These are going to be really well charged. Just gotta get those in. Right, let's put that on there. Probably get warm wires again now and see how far we can push this capacitor up towards its uh, 2.7 volt limit. Is that getting warm? Not very warm. Just mildly warm. Okay, I'll leave that for a bit. Right, the capacitor voltage is now approaching 2.5 volts. Now, I'm not sure whether you can hear, but this boost converter is now making a whining noise, a squealing noise at a frequency I can hear, so that can't be much more than about 10 kilohertz, I wouldn't have thought. So I'll just wait for this to uh, get up to 2.5 volts. I don't think it's going to go much beyond that. So the voltage of these cells will have dropped down a bit since I took them out of the charger. But they should hold 2.5 volts for a fair while, and they have. The capacitor is now at 2.5 volts. Well, this is all very exciting. Right, well, there's probably not much point going much further. It's going to be very slow if it goes much further at all. So perhaps I'll take this off and we can see how quickly the voltage on the capacitor starts to drop down now that we've got um, a load of an LED on there. But also the ringing sound, this high frequency ringing, is a mechanical vibration caused in the inductor. So of course that's actually there's actually movement there, so that's going to be consuming some power. These boost converters are of course not 100% efficient, so that's dropped back down to 2.4 volts now. But I would imagine this LED will stay on for several hours now, uh, receiving a boosted voltage from the capacitor, 2.3 uh, and a half volts at the moment, boosted up to 5 volts, and then the LED stuck across the 5 volts, it's got a 2.2K uh, resistor in series with that red LED. But yeah, this is a super capacitor with lots of storage. So because this is so much fun, I've uh, gone and ordered some more. Oh, that's my DVM telling me I haven't pressed a button for 
five minutes, which is really stupid. Uh, I've gone and ordered some more of these capacitors. Um, I've ordered a 500 farad 2.7 volt. That was uh, just the one capacitor for a similar price, about four and a half dollars or something like that. I've also ordered a bank of um, super capacitors on a PCB and the capacitors are all in series. So the voltages add up. It's around 15 volts, I think, but I think the idea is you can use it uh, in some situations where a 12 volt battery would normally be used. So that should be fun. That also has protection components on the board to stop individual capacitors going over voltage because you don't want to take these capacitors over voltage because then the electrolyte starts to uh, electrolyze. In other words, it, the water content starts to split into hydrogen and oxygen and of course that will eventually burst the, uh, the seal on the top of the cap. So you do need to keep these below their maximum voltage. In fact, I think I'd be tempted to keep these. I wouldn't probably want to take them much above about 2.6 because I'm not sure what quality these are, how perfect the uh, electrolyte material is. So yeah, more supercapacitor experiments coming up. But uh, for the moment, cheerio.